time for them to miss me. Yes, I see the things that they wishing on me. Hope I got some brothers that outlive me. They gon' tell the story was different with me. God's plan. God's plan. Hey, everybody, this is Robert Woods, and you're listening to the Knight's Tale podcast, where we discuss the mindsets and the tactics that elite military veterans use during their transition to the civilian workforce. Today, we have our guest, the great Tyler Brown. How's it going, Tyler? It's going good. It's going good. It feels good to be here and talking to you, Rob. (laughs) Awesome. So um, Tyler was in the Navy for about three and a half years as a nuclear weapons security at Kings Bay Nuclear Submarine Base. Uh, Right now, he currently works at a great, great company, Guggenheim Partners, an investment firm in, in the area of compliance, correct, Tyler? That is correct. Yes, I do uh, work in a compliance and also surveillance uh, team. That's amazing. And um, he's currently a student as well, um, a student at Fordham University um, in an undergraduate professional studies program. But there are some new developments in regard to your educational pursuits, right? Yes, there are. Uh, I'm actually meeting with the chair of undergraduate admissions, Mary Burke, at, uh, over at Rose Hill this coming Tuesday to talk about a potential opportunity about getting into the master's program. I'm hoping to study uh, financial economics at the, at the graduate level uh, upon graduation at uh, my undergrad. That's amazing, man. That's, and congrats. I mean, I'm sure you'll get that. And I'm sure after um, that lady hears this, she'll definitely <laughs> accept you into the program. <laughs> um, Absolutely. I, I'm hoping so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't doubt it at all. So tell us a little bit about like your personal life, maybe how you grew up or where, um, and then how you got into the military. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I'm the youngest of uh, four siblings. I got three older brothers, um, which I think is, is pretty cool because they've always you know, pushed me to be better. And I always had leaders and role models to look up to. Hmm. And uh, I'm also a first generation American. You know, my family is from Belize. So only me and uh, the brother closest to me were actually born here. Everyone else in my family had to take the citizenship test to actually become an American citizen, which I think is, is pretty neat as well. Wow. And uh, I recently got engaged uh, December 21st, which is, you know, a huge step in my life, the most promising thing that I've done so far. And I, I can't wait till our wedding. And also, uh, I'm 24 years old, going strong. Amazing, man. Great. Um, that's great. And congratulations on, on all of those things, especially being engaged. That's a huge step in life, especially for a young guy. I mean, a lot of people really think, you know, I'm going to get married when I'm like 35, but you can get married. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're all in the business about uh, proving people wrong. So don't let anybody tell you, that, you know, there's an age limit to anything. You're, you're capable of whatever you, you, you want to do. Exactly. So like in your role as a comp- uh, in compliance, um, what are some key deliverables and like what's your typical day like when you're accomplishing those tasks? Sure. Um, so basically deliverables can range anywhere from monthly report to a semi-annual report to an annual report. And then we, we also get, you know, ad hoc requests from different teams in, in the firm. You know, you might have the finance team ask you to send you over a list or something in that nature, but those are more on the ad hoc on the ad hoc sides. Okay. But as far as monthly reports, these are just you know things that we we recon and make sure our traders are staying within their within their rules and regulations of Finra. And uh, other than that, I, I would uh, spend time producing informational slide decks or reports. Spend a lot of time on the Finra website looking up new rules and regulations that they're upcoming or things that are trending on the FINRA website, such as, you know, trace reports, which basically means your order times have to match up with your execution times on both ends. Hmm. So just basically things like that. Wow, that, that sounds really cool and really uh, intricate. I'm, I'm, I'm really not surprised that they really got you in that position so that you can, uh, <laughs> you know, provide an impact. So that's, that's really cool, man. Um, so Absolutely. Like, what, what would you say are some, some required skills for your current career field is it like attention to detail or uh what would you say are some key skills well i would say definitely the 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 top 
trait that you would you would need in this industry is the ability to work with with minimal supervision. I mean, you're you're given a task, and like I said, you know, you're you're given a monthly report, so it's not like the military where you know you're micromanaged to a point or to a certain extent, because you're you're actually given a lot of freedom to get your work done within a given time period. You have due dates that you have to meet, but your supervisor won't be on you and and ask you constantly like, hey, how far along are you on your report? You know, that year report is expected to be produced on the due date. So you, you definitely need that trait to, to be able to work without someone telling you every single thing to do. And as well, in addition to that, attention to detail is also paramount to almost everything because you're looking at numbers that, especially in, in the compliance industry, you have to make sure that all these numbers match up exactly on your, on your order ticket than they do on the, on the recon report. So everything has to match up down to the decimal and, and you can't, you can't miss a penny. It's, it's kind of just like accounting, you know, you got, you got to have that huge t attention to detail. Also, you need to have a lot of organizational skills and the ability to relay information and simplify it for others to understand. Because in, in the industry, you're not everyone is familiar with all the terms that you are familiar with because I specify compliance, whereas someone who specifies in, I don't know, let's say operations you know, our, our workload is completely different, but we still work for the same company. So I'll have to relay inf compliance information to them in a way that is easily readable and easily understandable for, for the person that I'm relaying information to. Right. That's really cool. What are some things that really made your transition smooth and successful? I think definitely uh, getting enrolled into school right after uh or as soon as i could after my discharge date i mean i got back to new york city kings bay in uh i want to say april and then i got right into the into the fall semester so it was kind of a jump right into it and then as i was in school i took advantage of the opportunities that my school had to offer as far as internships and you know just getting your name out there networking opportunities meeting employers Things like that are, are definitely ways to, to get yourself noticed at, at that level. And as well as seeking as much help as possible from everyone you come across, whether it be professional or just someone you meet, a student that you meet in your class, as well as professors, because they can help you on your resume, help you develop your, your interview skills by information that they've they've probably gone through an interview that they can relate to you. Right. I mean that's yeah, that's one of the things I did as well. And it seems like that's that's one of the key steps to the transition having at least one bridge you know and a lot of times exactly. it's you have to at least go to go to school or something um and even if you already have a degree when you're getting out like a graduate school program or a certification program those things help you tap into a network that you really didn't or may not have had before uh, so i think it's really it's really neat that you brought that point up um, and that's something that a lot Absolutely. of us, yeah, something that a lot of us. Need. And then it, mm -hmm. in addition to that, I also wanted to say uh, whether you're in the industry or not, it, it also helps to just learn the yeah. financial terms and, the, and the, the way everyone in the financial industry speaks. You know, you have to know the difference between fixed income and equity. You have to know the difference between FHLB, FINRA, the SEC. These are all, you know, acronyms, but just like in the military, they stand for something. Right. And it, it makes it a lot easier if you would take the time to do that extra research, go on Investopedia and, and just look up what's a convertible bond, what's a swap, what's an option trade, what's a future. You know, these are all things that that you can look up on your own without a, you know, school to teach you. It, it, the information is, is readily available on the Internet. So you, it, if you get, go that extra mile, it, it's definitely worth it. Exactly. And I mean, we live in a digital age, so there's really no excuse for any of us to be lacking, uh, if, especially if we have an internet connection. <laughs> so, um, exactly. It makes so exactly. much sense. Yeah. So, what, as we wrap up here, what are some tips that you would give a veteran that is currently searching for opportunities? Because um, I know when I got out, I, I really didn't know anybody, and I was trying to figure out what was the next step or who I could actually talk to. I really didn't know anybody that was in my position in New York. Um, but so what are some tips that you would give to a veteran if they're currently searching? Um, 
the, the number one thing I would say is don't get discouraged. You know, if no matter how many jobs or internships you apply to, no matter how many times you get rejected or you, or you get, you know, disqualified from the program, don't get discouraged. And if you know that this is what you want to do, you'll make it there. And it, it just takes hard work and dedication. And I mean, I'm pretty sure we've all been in that boat where we think that, you know, we have something secured and we're really excited about it. And then we get that unfortunate news, you know, that it was offered to someone else or there was no more space available in the program. Yeah. So, you know, these things are very competitive and, and that's okay. So that's one thing I would say. And then just join as much organizations as you can. Try to network as much as you can. Get on, you know, get on the internet and, and look up veteran specific organizations because those are also very helpful. They, they, they truly care about the veteran community here in New York city, or I'm pretty sure anywhere in America. Right. Um, they definitely take care of us. And uh, also just make sure you tailor your resume to exactly what you're, you're looking for, because we could have came from, from anywhere in our career field, but in the financial industry, things weigh heavier on your resume than they would in a, in a different type of industry, say you worked retail or you worked in the, in the food industry, you know, if you put your, you, know, you were a server, it may not weigh as heavy as if you were a banker or a teller at a, at a bank, you know, you have to tailor your resume to exactly what you're applying for. Exactly. And I think another key to that, just to piggyback off of that is that even if you were working at a shoe store or even like at a gas station, there are some skills that you obtained that um are applicable to another career field such as finance so, Absolutely. um so you know figure out how to convert it to another industry such as finance or anything else because um, we design our destiny but if you look at the barriers and only the barriers you're never really going to be able to jump over them um and it seems like tyler really uh is a focused person he's a positive person he's an optimistic person that has always been focused on the end result has he heard the word no before i don't tyler absolutely you yes. hear no every day <laughs> exactly so he heard the, no, the word no before i've heard the word no before i'm sure you've heard the word no before um but that's something that we'll have to embrace uh in love love the word no because there's always going to be something better right around the corner um and so at this time we're gonna go ahead and uh bid tyler brown adieu and let him enjoy the rest of his saturday afternoon um uh, and enjoy the super bowl but tyler um any 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 bets on the super bowl or who, who are you going for um i want to say we're going for the eagles I'm sorry tom brady but uh you got a little too much you gotta let somebody else get a get a get a ring here man come on I hear you. I hear you. So Tyler Brown, thank you so much for being on the Night's Tale podcast. And I uh, hope you have a great day, man. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, everybody. This podcast was brought to you by Banneridge, the company that educates other businesses about programs that could increase veteran income by up to $40,000 in a year during their transition. To learn more about Banneret or ways to improve your standard of living during your transition, contact Robert at Banneret.org or reach out to us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or our website, Banneret.org. Thank you.